Hi guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to increase the voltage of a battery. Now I've got this 24 volt 20 amp hour battery here. I'm going to be increasing the voltage to 36 volts by adding a few lithium cells. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about safety. Now I'm going to be using some different tools here, namely a spot welder. So there are a few different safety things that we need to talk about. First of all, we're going to be wearing our safety glasses just to make sure we don't get anything in our eyes. We only have two of them, you should take care of them. Next, because we're going to be dealing with the battery, we're going to make sure we take off any jewelry, such as my watch here that has a conductive band on it. And lastly, because we're using the spot welder, we're going to be wearing gloves. This will also keep our hands from causing a short if we get some sweaty palms. Alright, now let's tear open that battery. Now I'm going to cut open this battery here with some scissors. You just want to be real careful when you're using anything metallic on these batteries that you're not going to create a short circuit. So I'm going along the side of the batteries here so I'm not near either terminal. I'm going to be very careful I'm not cutting any little wires. So now we can see the insides of our battery. And what we have here are actually uh, eight cells in parallel and then seven cell groups in series. So these eight cells here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this is basically one big cell going lengthwise here, horizontal across the battery. That's just one cell, everything's welded in parallel. Next, we have these, uh, these sets of eight cells, this parallel group, welded in series. So those are these short pieces of nickel here. This is a series connection. So you can see we're going from the positive, which is the white end of these cells, to the negative of the next cell group. That's sort of the, the pink end. There's no, uh, there's no paper gasket there. So what we're doing is we're going from positive to negative, and then there's nothing going between the second group to the third group here. If we flip the battery over, we can see on the other side we've made that connection. Okay, so this was the first uh, cell group. This is cell two, and then cell group three. So two to three is connected on this side. If we go back, three to four is connected on the other side. So you can see how we skip each side and that way we're, uh, we're welding these things in series. So we've got seven cell groups in series here. That makes a 24 volt battery. And what we're gonna need to do is come back and add three more cell groups here. So if this is cell group seven here, we're gonna have to come back and add three more groups, eight, nine, and 10, and that's gonna bump us up to a 36 volt battery. So now let's get our cells ready. So now I'm going to check the voltage of my cells here, and I see that these cells are at about 3.80 volts. Um, plus or minus, you know, one or two thousandths is going to be just fine. But basically you want to make sure these are all nearly identical, and it looks like they all are here. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to measure the voltage of the whole pack as well. When I measure the pack, it looks like we're getting about, um, what is this here, 26.8 or so. So if we divide that by the seven cells here, we get just about 3.8, which is exactly what our spare cells are. And that's perfect. You want these to be at almost exactly the same voltage. Now I'm gonna remove the old nickel strip from the positive end of the seventh cell group where we had that old big uh, discharge wire. Now you want to be careful when you do this, and if you have little remnants of nickel strip left on the ends of the cells, you want to make sure you remove those before you go forward. And now I'm just going to replace that old piece of nickel strip that we pulled off with a nice new clean piece of nickel strip. Now you want to be very careful when you're putting these long strips on here, because if they move a little bit they could contact the other parts of the battery and create a short. So just be very careful and hold those guys in place. You can also use a shorter piece of nickel strip and use a few of them if that makes you more comfortable. So now I'm just going to start adding the eighth group of cells here and you can see that I'm making sure that when I glue these on they're facing the opposite way of the previous group of cells. That way I can easily weld them in series. And now I've cut a few short pieces of nickel strip and I'm just going to start doing these series connections here, going from the positive end of the seventh cell group to the negative end of the eighth cell group. Now I'm going to add the ninth cell group, again making sure I've got these cells facing the opposite way of the eighth cell group. And then I'm going to weld on a long piece of nickel, completing the parallel weld all the way along the length of this cell group. That way all of these cells are going to be welded in parallel.
And then after the parallel weld, I'm going to do my next set of series welds. Now I'm going from the positive end of the 8th cell group to the negative end of the 9th cell group. And now I'm adding the last cells. This is going to make the 10th cell group. And here I'm going to add the long nickel strips to make the parallel connections on both the 9th and 10th cell groups. And again here, remember, you just have to be really careful when you're laying down these long nickel strips just to make sure that they don't move and contact the terminals on any of the other parallel groups. And if you need to, remember, you can make these shorter strips. That way they're easier to place down. And then once I finish those last parallel welds, I'm just going to do the final series welds here, going from the positive end of the ninth cell group to the negative end of the 10th cell group. And that's the last welding I need to do on this battery. Now I've already disconnected the old BMS, and now I'm going to go through and take off all these old wires, because we don't need those anymore. We're going to put new wires on for our new BMS. And then I think I'm going to put the new BMS right here on this piece of foam where the old BMS was. Now for the new BMS, we're going to start by connecting the B- wire, the big fat black wire here. And that's the one that's going to go to the negative end of your entire battery, the negative end of the first cell group. So I'm going to strip the, the wire here, and I'm going to solder this directly to the B- wire on the BMS itself. And I'm going to make sure I've got my piece of heat shrink on here also for good measure. Next I'm going to connect all of my BMS's balance wires, starting with this little black wire here. This is B-1, or it's the negative end of the first cell group. So I'm going to solder this one, and then I'm going to go to the next uh, red wire. I'm actually going to skip one wire, and then go to the second one, which is the positive end of the second cell group. Then I'm going to skip another wire and go to positive 4, and then positive 6, and positive 8 and then finally positive 10. And then I can flip the battery over and do the other side. And now on this side of the battery I can solder on the BMS balance wires for positive one, positive three, positive five, positive seven, and then lastly positive nine. So now I've got my discharge wires here with my Anderson power pole connectors already connected. I'm just going to lay these out in the orientation where I'm going to have them. I'm going to come out of this back corner here. And now I can see uh, about where I need to solder on the negative wire here to the blue wire on the BMS, which is the P- wire coming from the BMS, the pack minus. And now I'll stand the pack up and just solder on this negative discharge wire to the P- wire on the BMS. And now I can see how long my red positive discharge wire needs to be, and I can cut it to length. Next I'll prepare the positive end of the 10th cell group to receive that red uh, positive discharge wire by just tinning this nickel strip. And notice that I'm tinning in between each of the cells. I'm not going to solder on top of each cell, but rather I'm going to solder in between each cell. That way I'm heating the cells as little as possible, and I'm only heating the nickel strip. Then I'll follow that up by soldering the discharge wire right onto the nickel strip. And again, I'm going to try to heat the cells as little as possible. So use a fairly high heat and for a very short period of time. And that'll give you the best results. Next, I've got my charge connector all uh, soldered up here and ready to go. Now this is a gold-plated RCA female connector. I'm going to take the red wire here, the positive wire, and go ahead and solder that right on top of my discharge wire here to the positive end of the 10th cell group. And then the blue wire, the uh, negative wire from the charger connector, is going to go to this yellow wire from the BMS, which is the C- wire on the BMS. And lastly, I'm just going to tape down all my wires here with this anti-static capped on tape. And this stuff is great, it's so much better than electrical tape costs like three bucks a roll. If you don't have it, you gotta get some.
Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the foam for wrapping my battery. This is just some three millimeter EVA foam. Uh, you can get it from like an arts and crafts store. I get mine online from AliExpress, but it's all the same. And basically I'm just cutting out an approximate shape of the battery. You don't really have to be that close. The idea is just that you've basically got foam wrapped around this thing. And now I'm gonna cut off a couple pieces of heat shrink from my roll here. I wanna make sure that I've got about an inch or so of overlap on both sides, uh, give or take a little bit, but um, that's about how much you want, about an inch. And I'm gonna cut out two pieces here because I'm gonna put them on at 90 degree angles. So I'm gonna put the first piece on, and then I'm gonna slide the second one on at a 90 degree angle, so I've got all six sides of this battery covered. And now I'm just going to heat this thing. I'm actually using my wife's hair dryer here. I have a heat gun, but I find that a high-powered hair dryer is actually nicer to use because it gives a more spread out heat. Sometimes a heat gun can be a little too aggressive. And somehow I missed getting this on camera, but then I did the second piece of heat shrink. And I just slid it on uh, 90 degrees perpendicular to the first piece. And that way all of my battery is covered with heat shrink and it's just you know, a nice professional looking heat shrink job. And that's it. Now I've got myself a brand new 36 volt, 20 amp hour battery. It's that easy. Thank you guys for watching and uh, thanks for checking out ebikeschool.com. And I'll see you back here next time for another hopefully interesting video.